Hello everyone, this is Nitpicking Nerd and today I want to talk about uh, things in Star Trek TNG which were unplanned, which were the result of uh, mistakes or all kinds of uh, unforeseen events which were uh, negative at the time but actually improved the show in the long term. And so I wrote down a few examples like that. The first one are the uniforms in the show. We know that uh, in the first two seasons they had those tight uniforms that were all one piece and they were made to be very tight in order to look totally wrinkle free, I guess to look futuristic as if it's made from some advanced material. So uh, Gene Roddenberry wanted the uniforms to look totally smooth and clean and because of that they had to make them uh, extremely tight on the actors and a lot of the actors complained, especially Patrick Stewart who told this story in a lot of interviews and behind the scenes stuff. He always said uh, how tight those uniforms were. They were two sizes too small. And he said it started causing him back pains. And because he kept complaining about that, that's why they redesigned the uniform in season three onward. And then it became that uh, two-piece uh, uniform. And that's why they all started kind of pulling it uh, downward to make it sit correctly and all of that. So we have the side effect of creating the Picard maneuver, the famous uh, shirt tag which might have added some personality, some little things happening in the background, which were not in the script, so I guess that's a small advantage. But the main advantage of all of this, in my opinion, is the fact that uh, because they had two sets of uniforms in the show, we had the original tight uniforms of season one, and then later the normal uniforms later, and thanks to this, they were always able to show us that something is in the past, or that someone is from the past, by simply having him be in the old style uniform. And that immediately tells us, the audience, that uh, that guy is from the past or that we're seeing some old crew or that uh, that ship is from the past. Or for example, in that episode where they found the other Riker who was left on some planet in the past, uh, a duplicate of Riker, and he was wearing the old style uniform. And that's just one example. We had plenty of examples like that of seeing someone wearing the old uniforms and immediately knowing that's from a few years before. And so I think... When we look back, that is something brilliant. That's something that uh, they should have actually planned out because that was an easy way of showing us visually the differences in time frames. Whenever someone went back in time, we could immediately see that simply by the uniforms. And especially in the last episode of TNG, when Picard was jumping between different time frames, that was an easy way to distinguish when he's in the past or the present. The future looked a lot different, but uh, the past and the present would have been indistinguishable if not for that uniform change. And whenever they had an episode with a ship uh, from even further back in time, from a few decades in the past, then they simply used those uh, uniforms that were in the movies that were filmed at the same time, the Kirk era movies. And so whenever they did want to have a few decades in the past, they had those uniforms. But when they only wanted to show someone from only a few years in the past, then they simply had that person in the season one uniforms. Another example of something unintended, which actually improved the show, was the death of Tasha Yar which only happened because the actress, Denise Crosby, wanted to leave the show. I guess she wanted to be a movie star. She thought uh, she has what it takes to be a big movie star, and so she felt bored on the show. They didn't give her enough lines or whatever, and so she decided to leave the show. And I think that also improved the show a lot uh, in the long term for a few reasons. First of all, killing off a major character in the first season was a good thing simply because it adds a few stakes. It shows that people can die on the show, even main characters can suddenly die. And so that immediately kind of raises the stakes for all the other characters and that adds a little bit more tension in the show. So whenever in future seasons someone was in danger, you felt uh, the possibility that someone might die for real. And so it was a very good thing in retrospect uh, to kill off a major character in the first season simply for that reason. And today a lot of shows do that all the time, especially after Game of Thrones, which did that with uh, most of its characters, and so that did add a lot of stakes. And ever since then, a lot of shows, they always do that. But back then, it was unplanned. And also because she left, it enabled Worf to become a much bigger character, because he became the security chief. And uh, honestly, I think he fits better in that role. Now, I think Tasha Yar could have been a great character if she stayed on the show, a strong female character who would be a badass, I think it could have worked, but still I think Worf was a better fit for that uh, job because he has a bigger presence, he looks uh, tougher, he looks stronger, he's eager to fight, so that's like the perfect job for him. So if I have to choose between these two options, I think Worf still would have been better. Now they could have simply split their duties, maybe have Tasha be the tactical officer and Worf is the security chief who handles uh, the physical confrontations with someone, but Tasha would handle the weapon systems. But then again, she wouldn't have uh, that much to do, so she would not be happy, probably. 
So overall, I think it was a good thing for the show to have Worf be in that position. And another unintended consequences which was good for the show is that it allowed all those stories with Tasha in alternate timelines or in episodes set in the past. For example, again, in that last episode of TNG, whenever Picard was in the past, he was in season one and we saw everybody in the old uniforms and we saw that Tasha was there and it was an easy way to distinguish which time frame he's in. And so it was very useful for the show to have Tasha, who everybody remembered, as someone also they had all those little scenes of Data kind of missing her. He had a hologram of Tasha and sometimes they talked about her as someone who died and all of that. And so it kind of added something to the show. It added the stakes, as I said, it added, you know, missing someone. And it added a lot to all those episodes that uh, taking place in the past or alternate timelines. One of the best episodes of TNG was yesterday's Enterprise. And one of the things that made uh, that setup so interesting is that they showed the alternate timeline in which they are at war with the Klingons. So the last 20 years were different and Tasha was still alive and on the ship. Still the security chief, especially because, you know, Worf wouldn't be one if uh, they are fighting the Klingons. Either he himself didn't want to or maybe Starfleet didn't want to accept him. It made sense for Worf not to be there and Tasha suddenly was still there because it's a different timeline and she didn't die. And then Picard had the moral dilemma of deciding if he wants to restore the original timeline, which means Tasha would disappear, she would die. And so that added a lot to that episode. And all of that only happened thanks to the fact that Tasha left the show and then the actors wanted to come back. And so they put her in all these kinds of episodes, which greatly improved them. And then later they even had the Scylla storyline, which also I thought was interesting. It didn't really end up going anywhere. They, they kind of dropped it after a few of her appearances. But I do remember that uh, cliffhanger in which she appeared and you were like totally surprised, uh, Tasha, how is she alive again? What the hell? Why is she a Romulan now? So I remember that as something very interesting and exciting. And then it's revealed that it's actually the daughter of Tasha Yar because of that episode of the alternate timeline. And so she had kind of like a personal relationship with the Enterprise crew who kind of know her. So that did make her kind of an interesting villain. It's too bad they didn't really develop that storyline further. Who knows, maybe she'll come back in the new Picard show. I hope so, because they never actually finished that. I would like that story to continue in some form. I know she probably appeared in uh, Star Trek games and the uh, books and all that stuff, but we didn't see her in live action after her last appearance in uh, Unification when Data gave her the Vulcan nerve pinch. And so it was a missed potential because I think they could have done more with her. But in those episodes when she did appear, I did think uh, she was an interesting villain and it was yet another way to tie it all together and to have that actress suddenly as the villain, which by the way, I think she was better as the villain in terms of acting. And so that makes her death in season one kind of uh, worth it. And all of this was totally unplanned and unintended. Another example is uh, Worf's forehead. For those who don't know, his forehead was actually stolen from storage in between seasons when they finished season one. Someone broke into their uh, studios and stole some stuff. And one of the things that they stole was Worf's forehead. And that's why they had to make a new one for him for season two. And the new one looked a little bit different because they didn't keep the mold that made the original one. So they couldn't recreate it exactly. And I actually think the newer one looked much better. The first one, in my opinion, was uh, way too big. It made his head look uh, unproportionately way too big. And it uh, didn't uh, fit organically with the rest of his body. And so the new one was much better, in my opinion. And this is another example of something that happened by accident because someone stole that original forehead. That's why they had to make a new one and then they made it look better. And that improved the show in the long term. Another example like this is Riker's beard. The, the actor uh, Jonathan Frakes came back to season two with a beard and then uh, the producers decided to let him keep it. And so I think it added a lot to his character. It made him more distinguished from others and it gave him some personality. They even talked about it in some episodes, uh, in the dialogue and so on. So it did definitely added some variety to the crew because almost everybody else are uh, clean shaven. And so it was nice to see one character kind of different. And another thing about Riker, and this is something I mentioned in my reviews of uh, TNG. I think uh, the actor became much more relaxed in the later seasons because in season one, he looks almost like a totally different character. Not just because he doesn't have a beard, but because uh, the way he talks, the way he stands, he seems kind of stiff, he seems uh, as if he's uh, unsure of himself, uh, he doesn't have that personality, he doesn't have all those little quirks. And so the Riker of season one was very boring compared to the Riker we know later in the show. And I think partly it's because the actor simply became much more relaxed and he allowed his natural 
personality and charisma to start to shine through and that greatly improved the character and there was another thing that was kind of a, a bad thing which had unintended good consequences and it's what gave him all those little mannerisms which also I think added some uh, personality to him and I'm talking about him kind of leaning on things, uh, sitting on consoles, putting his leg up on stuff which I think added a lot of body language which made him seem much more confident but uh, the real reason for that was actually that Jonathan Frakes had back problems, he had a lot of back pain and that was the reason why he was uh, standing like that and walking like that simply because he had back pains but we didn't know that and so to us it simply seems as if Riker is relaxed and comfortable and he's confident enough to do all those uh, things which uh, a normal junior officer probably wouldn't do you know a normal officer wouldn't start putting his leg up on consoles and stuff like that and so that's also I think an unintended benefit I think it actually added something to the character it gave us something to imitate if we were to imitate you know the Riker walk or the way that Riker uh, sits and all that little stuff, it adds uh, all these mannerisms to the character and so I think this is another unintended consequences that improve the show. Another example is uh, Whoopi Goldberg coming on the show because she asked to be on it at the time she became a big star in movies and so they actually didn't believe that she wanted to be on the show. She asked uh, LaVar Burton to tell the producers and they didn't believe him and then she finally convinced them that she wants to be on the show and she doesn't expect to be paid a lot because they thought uh, she would want a lot of money because she's a big star and then she simply said she wants to be on the show because she was a fan of the original Star Trek it's what inspired her to be an actress because she saw Uhura being on the bridge and all of that and so it inspired her and so she really wanted to be on Star Trek and because of that uh, they created the character of Guinan who otherwise might not have existed maybe even 10 forward wouldn't exist if not for her, at least not uh, so early in the show. And I think the character of Guinan was really good. They only had her once in a while, but whenever she appeared, she had some clever dialogue. And you know, if that character didn't exist, I guess maybe a lot of those lines would have simply gone to Consular Troy, and maybe it would have made Troy a better character, because most of the time she wasn't that clever. You know, it's hard to write a good dialogue constantly, but uh, because Guinan only appeared once in a while, and she only appeared when they needed her and uh, so they always had some excellent lines of dialogue for Guinan in almost every appearance she made and that made Guinan seem like a very wise character because whenever she had something to say it was always something good and if she didn't exist her lines probably would have gone to Troy but uh, even though it probably would have improved the character of Troy a little bit I think all that stuff might have been uh, diluted so much because of all the other nonsensical Troy stuff because Troy wasn't that good of a character most of the time and even if they gave her some good lines once in a while it would get diluted we wouldn't uh, she wouldn't become such a memorable character as Guinan was in my opinion and so having Guinan as a separate character was probably better than simply fusing her with Troy another example of something unintended and unplanned which improved the show was Wesley leaving the Enterprise and it was all because Will Witten wanted to quit also to do movies he thought he has the potential to be a big movie star he felt unhappy on TNG I think because some of the producers probably Rick Berman didn't talk to him uh, nicely for example they gave everybody a raise in salary but they didn't want to give one to him instead they wanted to promote him and he thought that's ridiculous uh, they basically treated him like a child all kinds of stories like that that he told and so he wanted to leave the show and I think it was a good thing for the show it's something that should have happened anyway even if he didn't want to leave and it's not because I hate Will Witten and I didn't even hate the character of Wesley. I talked about it a lot in my reviews. I was a kid myself and so I actually kind of liked Wesley. So it has nothing to do with that. It's mostly because it wouldn't have made sense for him to stay on the Enterprise for the whole show. Because his character is someone who constantly wanted to be in Starfleet. He constantly applied to Starfleet. He constantly dreams of going there. And yet he gets stuck on the Enterprise all the time for some reason. They always had some different excuse every season. Oh, he just missed the transport ship to the academy, so he will have to stay for another whole year. All kinds of excuses like that. And then instead Picard promoted him directly to acting ensign with a uniform, and so he basically skipped the academy, and I think that would have been ridiculous for him to never go to the academy and simply become an ensign right away. It wouldn't make sense, and so Wesley had to go at least for a while to the academy. Because simply it wouldn't make sense for him to remain in Starfleet without ever being in the Academy. And that's what would have happened if Will Witten himself didn't decide to leave the show. And so this is something unintended, unplanned, which actually improved the show in my opinion. 
And also him leaving the show opened up his slot on the bridge for new characters and uh, for a while I remember they just had a bunch of extras instead of him at the helm but eventually they had the uh, Ensign Rowe becoming the new pilot and she was an interesting character and uh, not a perfect one I think they could have done a lot more with her but uh, it did kind of add something new to the crew and so it was a good thing. And so Ensign Rowe probably would never have existed if uh, Wesley remained on the Enterprise. And another shakeup they did in the later seasons was putting Troy in a Starfleet uniform and started giving her all kinds of plot lines about her being an actual Starfleet officer, which I think greatly developed uh, the character and also improved her because, you know, in the first seasons, a lot of times she felt kind of useless because she was only the counselor, only given all kinds of uh, pointless bits of dialogue, things that were obvious. And then in the last two seasons they gave her a uniform and started uh, giving her more stuff to do as an actual Starfleet officer, which she always was, she always said she's in Starfleet, but for some reason she never wore the uniform until uh, Captain Jellico told her to do it, because he was more formal, I guess Picard uh, just allowed her to dress however she wanted, even when she's on duty. And the real reason behind the scenes that they made this change was actually because Marina Sirtis to play Troy, she gained weight and she didn't look as good in all those uh, tight dresses that she used to wear before. And this is according to Marina herself, she told that in behind the scenes uh, interviews, she said that because she gained weight and didn't look as good as before in those uh, tight outfits, that's why they decided to give her a uniform instead. And I guess it's a good thing they didn't have those uniforms of season 1, because of what I said in the beginning, because then that would be the same problem. And so because the uniforms were not as tight and she gained some weight and so they put her in the uniform and because they did that, they started giving her all kinds of plot lines about her being an actual officer and uh, she wanted to be promoted to a commander and there was a whole episode about that, a b-plot of an episode was her uh, doing the command test and being promoted and then doing night shifts and then uh, in the end in the movie generation she even piloted the ship which didn't end up so good and so that's kind of funny in retrospect but uh, overall it's a good thing that they finally gave that character more stuff to do because as I explained previously they didn't really give her a lot of clever dialogue most of the time, oftentimes it went to Guinan instead and so one of the jokes about the show is that uh, she was kind of uh, useless in a lot of episodes. She always kind of stated the obvious. And even though she had telepathic powers, but uh, her powers are not full. And so she was sometimes uh, unclear about what she's sensing. And so it was kind of annoying a lot of times. And so I think uh, when they made her an actual officer and had her do officer stuff, I do think that greatly improved the character. It uh, gave her more stuff to do, which was actually useful. And so I think this is another example of something that uh, was unplanned, unintended, which improved the show and it was all a result of something bad, uh, in this case her gaining too much weight and uh, not looking as good in those old outfits. But it had the unintended uh, side effect of improving her character. Another small example is in the episode The Survivors, we had that scene of Kevin uh, admitting to everything in the end and talking about uh, how his uh, wife died and that's why he lost his temper. And I always uh, thought that scene was very well acted, it was very emotional. I thought it was just good acting, but it turns out uh, that actor who played Kevin actually lost his real life wife uh, of decades just before filming this episode. And so no doubt uh, that dialogue had a real emotional impact on him because he was talking about losing his wife and he actually just lost his real life uh, wife as well and so maybe that explains why that scene was so emotional you could really see the pain in his eyes and all of that and the final example I want to talk about uh, is about Patrick Stewart wanting to leave the show he originally he said that in interviews that he only signed on to the show because he thought it will only be one season he wouldn't have signed it if he knew he would have to be there for six years the original contract was uh, six years by the way and so he wouldn't have signed it if he knew the show will live on for so long so that was good of course, but uh, I heard somewhere that he actually wanted to leave the show in the middle. He wanted to quit after season 3. And because of that, it created that whole cliffhanger of him becoming a Borg and Riker giving the order to fire because they didn't actually know if Patrick Stewart will come back or not in season 4. And that's why they wrote the ending like that, to easily explain it away if he will not return to the show. If Patrick Stewart will not be in the next season, then they would simply say that he was killed off when Riker fired at the Borg cube and then Riker would continue as the captain of the Enterprise. Which could have been interesting but I don't think the show would have been the same without Picard. I think Picard was one of the reasons this show was so good. Why it's the best Star Trek show in my opinion uh, in a large part thanks to Patrick Stewart. 
and the character of Picard. But uh, Patrick Stewart uh, wanting to leave could have been uh, what made that uh, epic cliffhanger of him becoming Locutus of Borg. Maybe one of the ideas would have been to keep him as a villain. Maybe he wouldn't have died, but uh, he would have remained a Borg and maybe would have made cameos in the future and so on, which could have been a creepy idea of your former captain who was a great character now being the villain of a show. That could have been interesting, but not having Captain Picard be the captain in the show, that would have been a terrible loss. So it's a good thing it didn't end up happening. But maybe Patrick Stewart's uh, desire to live is partly what made that last episode of season 3 such an epic cliffhanger. And of course eventually he decided to stay, but uh, that episode was brilliant in a large part because of that whole element of Picard being kidnapped and turned into the villain. So that's all the examples I have for today. Let me know what you think. If you have any more such examples, we can discuss it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Click the notification bell if you want to see updates of new videos. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye.